Uh, I'll try to be brief and I'll try to make a few brief points responding to the Chair's uh, also request. I started my career when the previous energy and food crisis was going. I don't want to think how many years that was back, but it was then. And um, at that time, the energy crisis and the food crisis were pretty unrelated. Well, we have an energy crisis or sitting energy crisis again, and we also seem to have a food crisis. What's the difference? The difference is that this time those are not unrelated and the reason really is climate change. So I want to elaborate on this theme. Uh, as you know, three weeks ago there was a very big international conference at FAO, which we had a big part to play. But that conference started as being a conference on climate change and food security, and it ended up being a conference on high food prices. Now, how could that be? Why would heads of state, 70 or 80 heads of state that came, really wanted to talk about not high energy prices, they wanted to talk about high food prices. It turned out that the most controversial issue in the conference was biofuels. So I will have a few things to say about that as well. Anyway, I will talk to you about a few things. First of all, an issue on biofuels. Everybody's talking about biofuels, but you realize that biofuels are very inefficient converter of energy. That's the first thing. And then if you start uh, looking around, you'll see that there is a very strong competition of land. And this is where the relationship comes. If you ask by how much land is there available to produce biofuels, which is not very much, it's only about 60, 600 to 800 million hectares, which are potentially available for biofuels production. And uh, the distribution of that land is uh, uh, such that it will change depending on which part of the world you are. Because climate change is going to affect very differently countries in the north and countries in the south. The countries in the north are likely to have improved conditions for land productivity, while the countries in the south are likely to experience difficulties. This is very interesting, and I will say something about this, because it has very strong implications, not only about energy, but also about security, not only food security, but human security as well. Now, climate change, uh, the uh, IPPC report, if you read it, and I have a graph on this later, it suggests that with climate change, agricultural productivity is likely actually initially to increase, will improve, and then it will subsequently decline. But of course you have another big impact which is going to be on water. In fact, what I think is almost a sure prediction is that we're going to have a lot more water wars in the future. We already have lots. We're going to have a lot more. And this is not only in developing countries. I think in Southern Europe we're going to have water wars. In my country, I'm from Greece, we already have one within the country. And I don't know about Italy. But anyway, the other point I wanted to make, and um, uh, this is something uh, that I've been saying is that despite very strong increases in agricultural productivity, this has been very disproportionate among the world. In other words, the developing countries are experiencing much lower growth in productivity, and at the same time, they are experiencing very big increases in food imports. So the markets are such that the developing countries are becoming dependent on food from imports, from whatever. And when the cost of food rises, it creates quite a lot of welfare problems for these countries. Another thing that most people don't realize is that the climate change is creating a lot of uh, variations in production conditions and creates more droughts, floods, and uh, this means the production variations are going to become more severe. This is something that perhaps has not been so much in the public eye. Another important thing, and very crucial for Europe, is that most of the affected land is going to be in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of South Asia. What does that tell you? That tells you that there's going to be a lot of pressure for people that are displaced by droughts and floods to migrate. So we should expect to see a very big migration pressure, especially in Europe. We're already seeing it, but as someone said, you ain't seeing nothing yet. It's going to come in a much bigger way. Now, these are the impacts of uh, what the IPPC report says about the potential impact of temperature change on yields. 
These are from the IPBC report. So you can see that there is some initial increase in yields and then subsequent decline. And this relates to this variability I was telling you about. But if you look at the number of countries fading food emergencies over the past 20 years, what you're seeing, and this is already observable, is an increase in the frequency of emergencies. And this is quite uh, uh, disturbing because you have almost a doubling of emergencies per year. We're talking food emergencies, we're not talking about any emergencies. And if you start to, this, to uh, break this by what is the cause of these emergencies, it could be a war, it could be a, 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 a natural disaster, you find that what is growing very much is the natural disasters part of the emergencies. So climate change is not only causing trend effects, it's also causing variations and it's causing disasters which are increasing, which are going to have a tremendous impact on people. Now let's go a little bit on bioenergy and production. Now, bioenergy, of course, has been strongly enhanced by its consideration in the climate change debate. And of course, people talk about opportunities for rural development and energy security. But there is this very strong land competition at least currently with current technologies, all biofuels compete with land with food crops, with current, what we call first generation technologies. What's the current consensus? And that's not always recognized, but the consensus as you can read two recent articles in science, is that the conventional agricultural feedstocks like maize, like uh, sugarcane and others, they don't perform well by environmental criteria. 